Betty, girl. Oh, Betty. Bob! Bob! Betty! Betty, sweetheart. Bob, what? is she? Open that up. Wait. Here. Hurry, lad. Take her to a doctor. Get her to town. Quick. Easy now. Be careful. Be careful. Bob! The gold! I'll get it. Hey, Bob, never mind the gold. Please, Betty, speak. Hurry, Bob, please. All right, Tom, we'll be there in a minute. Here, Betty. Oh, hurry, Bob. You know, you have the heck out of that, boy. That's one of the things that must killed somebody. Hey, Tad, how did it happen? I don't know. They were speeding through. I gave them the whistle. That's that. Well, they must have jumped because they don't see any bodies laying around here. The conductor, conductor. I saw a car pull in here, and they picked up a couple of people. Well, Which way did it go? Well, they beat it down the road. Down the road? Yes. I bet they got away. Ah, huh? Trying to make a getaway, eh? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Well, here we are, folks. But Betty, I must insist that we take you home first and then see Dad. You no, know, Tom, I'll be all right shortly. You made a bet with your father that you'd deliver that gold bullion to him in his office. And you're going to do it. Yes, but your comfort and health means more to me than my bet. And all the gold in Galconda. But you're delivering that gold in the face of all that's happened. It means a great deal to my story. Oh, all right. Hey, Bob, come on. Bring along that sack of yellow trouble. Come on, Betty. Boy, that stuff's heavy. You got it? Yes, Derek, this later. What happened? Oh, everything went wrong. I'll give you the details later. But I want you to know that young Hood and Collins beat us up and got away with the gold. A nice, clever, crafty bunch you are. All right, I'll see you at your office. And don't call on this phone again. Here, Betty, sit down here. There it is, Tom. You won your bet. Oh, my no. head. What 
Tom, what happened? Did, did Miss Moore meet with an accident? We all met with an accident. One that was very cleverly planned. Where's my father? Oh, Tom, my boy. What happened? Everything's happened, Dad, that shouldn't have. Well, we brought your gold through. Here it is. And we have positive proof the stealing of the lost special was an inside job. You hear that, Slater? I'm beginning to believe that the boy is right. I know I'm right. And today's experience proved it. Look here, Hood. Is your son trying to accuse you and me of stealing our own gold? I'm not accusing anybody. But give me two more days on this job, and I'll bring the leader of that gang of crooks right before you here in this office. Give your son this chance, Hood. He's already accomplished more than the detectives we had on the case. All right, son. But I want to have a serious talk with you after you've told me what happened to you today. Well, it's a long story, Dad. You can read it in the papers. Betty's going to write it for the clarion. I'd like to read that story, too, Tom. And uh, I want to congratulate you. Now, if you excuse me, I, uh, I'll go to work. Well, Tom, you won your bet. But I'm sorry to see you get all mussed up. Goodbye, Mr. Hood. And goodbye, Betty. And once again, I want to say that I'm very much opposed to you taking these desperate chances. And I heartily agree with your advice, Mr. Hood. Well, you'll have to take chances if you want to accomplish anything. You well, know, I guess you're right. Bye, Mr. Hood. Goodbye. Bye. See you kids later. Look here, son. This thing is getting more serious every day. Sit down. You know, Dad, outside of ourselves, Slater and your immediate employees, no one knew that I was taking that gold from the Galconda mine to this office. Which means that someone in our organization that's in league with that gang that stole the last special. Decidedly. Hmm. And in two days, I'm going to tell you just who is the brains behind this whole affair. Look here, son. You don't think that Betty's uncle, Horace Moore, the general manager of the state-specific railroad is connected with that gang, do you? Certainly not. The Moors are clean-cut people. Horace Moore may be your enemy, but he's not a crook. Oh, I see. You're kind of fond of his niece, Betty, aren't you? I certainly am. Dad, I'd risk my life for Betty Moore. Oh, I see. You don't suspect Riley or Foreman at the uh, mine, do you? Oh, no. Riley's as honest and reliable as the sun. There is one thing that I'll have to investigate up at the mine, though. I figure on going up tomorrow. All right, son. But don't forget you're being followed and your every movement carefully watched. Don't worry, Dad. I'm not forgetting anything. Good. Well, I'm going to run along. I'll see you later. All right, son. Bye. Now, men, we are up against a serious proposition. We've got to do one of two things. Either get rid of Tom Hood and his friend Collins right now, or get out of the country. I'll tell you, Slater, it's uncanny the way young Hood gets away from us. It gives me the creeps. Well, I found a way to stop him. Well, how? How? Through the Moore girl. I heard him tell his father today that he'd risk his life for her. Well, we'll give him the chance. Well, how? I've been working on the scheme all afternoon. Betty Moore and her friend Kate live alone in an apartment that is cared for by an old janitress named Sprague. Now, well, this is my scheme. Well, sir, I was home when Virgil coming. <laughs> well, Bob, I've discovered something. I worked out a list of names from those code books we got from the crooks. Yeah, well, what's that give you? 
Well, one of the names is Flynn. Well? There's a Jim Flynn working at the mine, and he's worked there a long time. Good. We'll investigate Mr. Flynn in the morning at the mine. Sounds good to me. <laughs> we'll sure be putting one over the gang's big chief. Now, listen, Bob. Here's how we'll do it. You get Marge. Now, tonight. Give her the lineup. All right, Chief. And Dirk, you take the boys here to the hideout at White's Point tomorrow morning and be ready for a battle. It's a great scheme, Slater. Your young hood falls for the girl's disappearance. Uh, he'll fall, all right. Where was I last night, Kate? Um, our correspondent was an eyewitness to the attempted robbery. Oh, yes, I remember. The bandits were foiled by the indomitable fortitude. Say, wait a minute. Isn't this the three-cent sheet that you're writing for? Yes, why? Well, then stick to three-cent words. How do you expect me to spell a string of words like that? Say, this place is a mess. Where's the woman who usually cleans up around here? I don't know. Mrs. Sprague hasn't come in yet. That's funny. She's never been late before. There she is now. Come in. Excuse me, Mom. I'm Mrs. Sprague's daughter. Mother sent me to do the cleaning. Oh, where is your mother? What's the matter? Has anything serious happened? Oh, Mom, we're in terrible trouble. Who was Nick, my brother? He got mixed up with the gang that stole some gold or something. They thought he squealed, so they're holding him prisoner. Why were they holding your brother prisoner? In a deserted building, on White's Cliff. The gang that stole some gold, hmm? Could I see your mother and brother if I went to this place on White's Cliff? Oh, yes, Mom. Mom's there now. There's nobody there but a watchman. I might be able to help them. Oh, Mom, if only you would. They need help. My brother wants to tell everything and will, if he gets out of their clutches. I know where White's Point is. Do I remember seeing that spooky-looking old building? Oh, you're surely not going there, Betty. I certainly am. This girl's brother may be able to tell us all we want to know about the lost special. Well, you're certainly not going alone without Tom or Bob. Why not? Tom or Bob's presence would only spoil things. Besides, Mrs. Sprague's there, and I'm not afraid. Oh, you sure have a lot of nerve. You've got to have a lot of nerve to write a story for the clarion. You go ahead with the cleaning, Miss. Kate, show Miss Sprague what to do while I dress. All right, Miss Sprague. Hi, Bob. All right, Tom. The bus is downstairs. Let's get rambling. Well, we'll have to stop by and tell the girls that we're going to mine first and that we're going alone. Alone is right on this trip. Come on. You check the gas and oil? I'll check. That's good. Betty. If you're determined to go on this fool's errand, I'm going with you. No, Kate, you stay here. I'll take the big car, and if I'm not back by 6 o'clock, get the boys and come to White Point after me, will you? If Miss Moore can do anything for your brother, she will. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, Kate. Where's Betty? Boys, I'm worried. That girl going out of here is the daughter of our old janitress, Mrs. Sprague. Her mother's passed out. Oh, them. no. She came here with a story about her brother being held a prisoner in an old shack on White's Point. Okay. Where's Betty? She swallowed that story, and she insisted upon going to White's Point to see if she could talk to the girl's brother. Great Scott. This is a frame-up as sure as you're born. Did you ever see this girl before? No. But she said her mother had to go to White's Point, and she came here to take her mother's place. And then she told you the story about the brother? Yeah. Bob, we're going to White's Point right now. Come on. I know where it is. Kate, ring up Dad and tell him where we've gone. Come on, Bob. Want you on the phone. All right, Gavin. Hello, Slater. Dirk talking. The scheme worked. Marge put it over Pig. 
The morgue girl is on her way. She'll be there now. And that's my business. But how about young Hood? Marge says if the morgue girl doesn't return by 6 o'clock, her friend Kate will go after her with Hood and Collins. Great. Well, we bagged the whole bunch. Well, the morgue girl will be here any minute. And Hood and Collins will follow this evening. Ah, great. the joint. There's Betty's car. Come on, we'll have to work fast. What can I do for you, miss? Is Miss Bray here? Yes, yeah, she's here. May I see her? Well, come on in. I'll ask her about it. Thank <laughs> you. 